Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 Futurecast. All right, taking uh, another look at the uh, latest on uh, now Hurricane Isaac, the uh, satellite picture behind me, very impressive. This is a high-resolution satellite photo that we use. It's only used during the daylight hours. It'd be no different if you were up in the... Uh space shuttle looking down on Earth and you can see the uh, very tight circulation now. New Orleans right in here and we've seen in the last several hours of a storm, at least on the satellite photo, that has more of a symmetrical structure, more thunderstorms, more tightening of the storm around the uh, the center which is now just off the uh, southeastern coast of Louisiana. Top winds now uh, coming in at uh, 80 miles per hour and here's a uh, the uh, radar presentation, and you can clearly see the counterclockwise circulation around the center of the storm, which is right in here, but even well away from the eye of the storm, you have these what we call feeder bands, these lines of torrential rain that can sometimes produce tornadoes heading for the uh, Florida panhandle. And the problem is this is moving very, very slowly, which means it rains for a long time. So while the wind is going to be a factor, as well as the surge of water coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, but rainfall am amounts, unfortunately, are going to be outrageous. Uh, 12 13, 14 inches of rain possible with the storm. And the anticipated track does take it on shore late tonight into early tomorrow morning. <coughs> Excuse me as a Category 1 hurricane as it tracks north and west. Of course, once it passes over land, it weakens to a tropical storm. But look at the slow movement. So along and to the right of the path of the storm will be copious amounts of flooding rain as it continues to work up to the uh, north into the central plains uh, by the early part of next week. And uh, certainly uh, not a Katrina-like storm, obviously. It's, it's not as powerful, but it will be a significant weather event, unfortunately. Closer to home, Doppler radar, it is quiet. We had, of course, the rain and the thunder this morning, though a few isolated showers forming up in Worcester County and a few of these may try to pass through later uh, early this evening. So have that chance in the forecast. We take a look at pictures now in Providence. Sunshine, 84 warm, still somewhat humid, but very dry air. Low humidity is waiting in the wings. It'll turn rather comfortable late tonight. Temperatures now in most areas between roughly 80 and 85, so still warm out there. Here's the wider view. We're tracking a cold front, the leading edge of drier air that's headed our way for later tonight. You'll really notice it tomorrow. Futurecast does a nice job of showing early this evening, perhaps an isolated pop-up shower, but generally clear skies overnight. Tomorrow morning, waking up to uh, sunshine, temperatures uh, in the upper 70s. Noontime, we're looking real good, and even later tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, very comfortable. There's definite A-plus weather coming up uh, for your Wednesday. A brief isolated shower this evening, and a few spots. It's more the exception rather than the rule. Generally clear skies. Overnight tonight, looking at very comfortable conditions. Good sleeping weather. Shut off the AC. Open up the windows. Let that fresh air in. And a nice start tomorrow morning with sunshine 68 to 75. And then during the afternoon, I was looking good. Good. Upper 70, so cooler than today, but uh, the comfort level is just terrific. Seven-day outlook showing the dry conditions extending through most of the holiday weekend. I still have the chance of a shower on a Labor Day Monday, but I've, I've moved it now to Monday night rather than Monday day. That will extend into Tuesday of next week. In fact, some of that is actually remnants of moisture from what was once uh, Isaac, but a nice stretch of weather ahead. All righty, Tony. Still ahead on Eyewitness News.